missing wheels. I've actually got quite a bit of weight to it. Let's see if I can put it in here. Just do these garbage cans in here. Let's see if I can put it in like this. Just barely made it. Okay. Something in the dumpster. Yeah, I was here to post to pick a washer and dryer, but I think someone might have already got it because I don't see one. So I'm set inside the house. That's a bummer. There's a mattress here. It's a bike. There was a sidestep. So that was a bummer. Come out all this, all this way. Hmm. Okay. I can't even take that because it's chained towards it. Unbelievable. Chained against it, so how would I grab it? it? Told me it was chained up. Well, that's a bummer. Okay, well, time to get here. Okay, I got a bunch of dryer plugs here. I just wanted to show you. Um, you know, I usually sell them the way they are, but uh, I did the math and everything and figured out what we can get per pound versus a pound of this. Okay, so basically, um, they pay uh, a plug like this, they pay 15 cents a pound. So it takes two and a half to make a pound, two and a half of these to make a pound roughly. So, and if I take these plugs out, it takes 10 plugs to make a pound, right? So I did the math, that would equal to about 60 cents I would get for 10 plugs complete. So if, if I take these ends off, that will give me roughly, uh, 10 plugs will give me around a pound. It'd be anywhere from $2 to $2.30 a pound I would get. So uh, I would make a little more, uh, a little more. But the problem is, like, I mean, they are hard to get out. You can put two into a vise. But I'm thinking what I might try next time is cut here a little bit. Maybe a little hacksaw around. May, may loosen the, the actual uh, plastic. Because the hard part is from here to here. The rest is easy. When I pulled the ground out, it actually pulled the copper wire out at the same time. So a couple wires came out and a couple didn't come out. As you can see, some were hard to really force them. So, like I say, um, so I think if you do do clean them, it'll take 10 to make a pound of brass. And then you'll have to do two and a half of these, basically make a pound. So it's your choice. Um, you need, you, you'll need a, vo a vice for sure. Um, a good uh, cutter, some sort of like, you know, those end cutters where you just snap stuff out like that. There's still two wires stuck in here. So if you can get it all out completely, then you know, you got a little more extra. But it's your choice. Uh, and also I stripped 11 dry dryer cords. Actually I stripped it by hand, just, I got a little wire stripper here, I'll show you. I got a wire stripper like this one. Seems to work pretty good. 
It's a Westward KC3 E. Um, they're like 30 or 40 bucks, something like that. And uh, you just cut along the wire like this. But when it's really sharp, it's, it's not as good. You have to wait till it dulls down, it works better. And some of this wire, the gauges are thicker, some of the wire is softer. Like this one's a pain to see how how it frayed more. And um This is this is your ground. Some grounds are smaller. And like this one here is pretty strong. A little bit stronger wire, see that? So it'll cut a lot easier. There's different grades of wire in these plugs. Some are drier plugs, some may be for stoves. So the stove one will probably be thicker than a dryer, I would think. But uh, 11, 11 cords, all different lengths. I got just over 7 pounds. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to rate this at. Number 2 or how they're going to rate it at. Bright and shiny, I'm not sure. I'm going to go take it back maybe today. Just see what they say. Okay, let me get set up. I'm going to show you what I do on taking boards apart. Got a bunch of boards here on different... Um, like the flat packs or BGAs with flat packs and different things and these are like your memory chips and all that and you got you got gold gold edge crystal oscillators you'll have um, tantalums mixed in here you'll have the black tantalums and you'll have MLCC's you'll have various sizes and there's something else here with the gold corners I'm not even sure what that is it's like almost like a fuse to find out what that is but I'll try to depopulate a few things, mostly the IC chips. I'll take the crystal oscillators, the IC chips off, MLCCs, uh, flop packs, and BGAs, and I'll leave the rest on there. Be and I'll just store the board for temporary. I just need to start building up a bunch of my uh, IC chips. So I've been starting. I'm so small starting here, but it takes a lot to build up. Okay, stand by until I get set up here. Share this with you um, on the dryer cords. Save 100 pounds of cords, so it's 100 pounds total weight. That's 40% waste will be there. So you have 40% plastic in the waste. So you have initially 100 pounds. Taking the 40% off, you only have 60 pounds of clean copper. So we'll do a figure: is if they're paying 80 cents a pound, that 100 pounds worth 80 dollars. So if you strip that down, you're going to get number two copper, say for instance, you'll have $190.20. So in actual fact, it's better, even the low grade, like the really low grade stuff that's strippable, if you granulate and whatever, the end result is it's usually 30, 30 to 40% waste, maybe even a little higher, it depends, but it averages out to about 40 because you're using different grades of wire. So if you average out at 40, so ideally at 80 cents is not bad. They were only paying 50 cents before and it was worth $3 a pound. So since they're worth 317 now, they're paying a little more. They went up, they went up 30 cents more. So ideally any wire basically, if you strip it, you're still coming ahead, you know, from $80 to 190 so that's my opinion on that it's it's worth it if you have time okay so I, I usually wear gloves right now I'm just doing a small demonstration here but would have latex gloves are good because these boards some are grimy or dirty and you know you don't want stuff on your hands but these are the BGAs right here gold corner chips it's got a heat sink on here so this is what I use tools I use a uh, a, f a flat um, like a putty knife it's a little stronger than normal an older older one heavy heavy I use this pliers just so I had this but it's kind of nice it's got this twist on here which is nice I use a screwdriver and you use a loop just because you want to know when you get capacitors and different things MLC's or you want to make sure they're you know there's their capacitors because some things look similar same with tantalums, you want to make sure you see the positive and negative on there. At least the positive side. Okay, so this is what I do with the uh, BJs. So I, I kind of base it to one corner. And I'll just tap it down. Tap it down like that. 
Same with this one here. Little two BJs be stripped like just like that. And there's a little bit of balls. That's why I use it. I'm using a puppy pad here. It just keeps everything. Some of these balls could be lead, lead coated, right, with lead solder. But some, some don't say some. Some boards, if you look at them, they say no lead. So this one, I'm not sure to be honest. It doesn't. It's not marked here, but tin could be tin solder, lead. But anyways, there's two BGAs here. Well, BGAs take a lot to add up. You know, this is only like uh, three quarters of a pound. You need a lot of boards. It's only two BGAs here. And here I have um, one, two BGAs also. It takes a lot, or three actually. The bigger they the are, the better they are, and the more gold content, the more wires and all that. So, okay, when I'm going for these type of chips here, I'll take a screwdriver, I'll take a sharp, sharp screwdriver, and I'll score one side of it like this. See that? And I'll just go like this. There. So I, as I scored it, and I just bend it over like that. And then also, you have these different type of flat packs. They have no legs on them. You have to knock them down. And they don't usually just tap off very easy. See that? Throw that in. I keep the BGA separate from the IC chips. And then you'll have, uh, like, I, I took a few of these. I'm not sure how good these IC chips are. You have these smaller ones here. I mean, they're very tiny, but, you know, people say anything with three legs is worth take, taking off. See, some, some aren't that good. Small ones are hard, some of them, but, but I looked at a few of them. They break apart. I'm not seeing anything interesting in them, so I'm more keen on the bigger ones. Okay, I want to show you now. We're going to get uh, on this board, there's lots of MLCs. They're all big. They're about the size of grain of rice. So what I'll do is I'll just get a piece of paper like this. And all you want to do is just kind of just motion this. Just turn a screwdriver. Go press against it and turn a screwdriver. See that? As I'm turning a screwdriver. And it will collect on a paper. Uh, my screwdriver is a little bit skinny. If you get one just a little wider blade, works a little bit better. But it takes a lot to add up to this stuff, I'll tell you. Like if you get big ones, there's some that are really big, but these are kind of tiny. And there's some even tinier ones up here, but as long as you, you know they come off in one piece then you're okay but it don't take much to I mean guys use the air chisels and stuff I mean there's not a lot of stuff that I want here anyways it's just a few things I'm taking so I don't really care about the air chisel but and, and air chisel a lot of stuff goes flying you want to do that in your garage and stuff or outside somewhere because it creates a lot of dust so these are all all the major ones here. Couple there. So, so like some of these they contain they contain silver and palladium and it could be some other metals in here that are precious also. So but most people are saving them. Like well the big companies that's where they're making the money is not just the gold, they're making money on all the other stuff involved palladium there's a lot of different metals that I'm not even sure what they are but there's a lot of the precious metals being used um, well the metals were cheap but now that a lot of these metals now they're very expensive today they were cheap before that's why electronic prices are kind of going up especially they can, as soon as things get so compact they for high heat and stuff, they need high high metals that uh, can withstand high heats. Okay, so these are all the ones I stripped off here, so I could just throw them in here. And I'll show you here. This is in my pile here.
some some are quite big and some are quite small so but anyways um that's my assortment there these are uh my black tantalums they all have a positive side that's very important you have to look for that one side will have a line or a positive or a positive will be on the board also uh, these are your the other tantalums and also tantalums come in different type of uh canister they come in canisters also this one has a positive negative i'm thinking it's a tantalum just because it has a positive negative on there but uh, you know we have to research this better and also i have the icy chips here and then you see it's all, all different kind of chips right some look like ram ram uh, like memory type uh, chips like on ram sticks and then we have these are crystals i popped them off but the only ones i really kind of think are worth taking um are these little tiny ones we can find one they're very tiny and they got uh, a little bit of silver or gold silver on the top and gold are on the edge you'll see they're right on the edge and if you look inside sometimes they break open you'll actually see um, something in the center and, and bonding wires five or six bonding wires going from the center to the edge legs then are in a gold the so gold bonding wires so those are good okay uh, also would also do, be on this chip here there's more more uh, well this is the one here it's talking about gold one I'm not sure what this one is here but it's got gold gold edges on here so I'm gonna put these aside and determine what they are later but there's gold plating on on the edges so I'm not really sure what that is but okay so there's also more here but they're very small this is uh you know I'll do as much as I can what I can see you know but uh, let me start taking some more stuff apart here's another uh, flat pack here so with these big flat packs all I do is go like this one side two sides that's all you have to do and that's it the big they are like that the legs are really soft it's very easy and then another one here another chip and then um like i said these other ones with the go like that see it's like that just pop right out now just go like that i mean you can use cut them on both sides it'd be a little bit easier but i don't mind twisting them off so we'll go for this flat pack here remember you you hit the flat pack, you just try to get the edge of the corner. That's easy. It popped off easy. Put a flat pack up here. Two flat packs. And these ones are <coughs> LG Electronics. AM AMCC Power PC. Korea so and then also these should this is the other one here I was talking about the gold corner ones corner ones so what you have to do is you have to so I'll go grab this right here uh, now we have uh, these are your standard crystal oscillators so I just use this plier like this Move this thing out of the way here, this capacitor. But anyways, it's just like this, and you just twist it, it just comes off instantly, very easy. Another one here, like no efforts. There's actually three I can see right now. That's three there. I see three, uh, four here, actually more, it's quite a few on this board. This is uh, probably like a, um, uh, probably like a satellite board or cable type, older cable one. So I, I tried sometimes taking these off like this, but they just they just break because they're so brittle. 
So ideally, to take these gold edged ones off, same process, you have to kind of hit the corner. You just have to tap it. There it is. Ah, it broke apart, see. The palm is the good. If I could uh, somehow give my magnifying glass and I could show you, you could see exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes you might have to use a heat gun or some of that. See that? Hope you've seen it. You'll see the bonding wire cinders, lots of gold. They're really decent. There's another one I smashed there. So, anyways, uh, they're a little bit tricky to get off. You may have to use heat or something on them to get them properly off, but. So, I'll try another one here. Okay, that one came off, no problem. You just gotta have patience. There it is. We'll just show a close up of it. If you can see that. You got the gold corners there. See that? So they uh, look like they're pretty good for gold. So, okay, let's see what else we can pop off this board here. And it's also like, uh, these are like almost like RAM, RAM chips. You can go through do them pretty quick. These smaller ones are a little tougher for some reason. This one broke, but I think they're just they're maybe kind of glued in there also using some other process. But Only BJ over here. Okay, just make sure you have a slight corner. There it is. Pop right off. BJ gold corner chip. It just depends on how much time you want to spend, right? There's lots of MLCs on here, like they're just so micro microscopic Let's see if I can uh, if you can just go like this with something like this even if it's hard I'll just go like one at a time but they, when they're too small they do break it just you got quite damaged when you got the when the heat on there I would just personally go for the bigger stuff like that's a bigger one here right so anyways um you know most of these these are too small to be honest even if you power chisel them it would just turn to dust uh if you depopulate it with heat you, you know might you might be able to save some of them but the actual fact is they're too too small Here's, an, here's another different type of IC, standard IC. That one works similar process. Some some are easier, some are harder. Here's another one, the bigger legs. Right? And the flat pack here. to do sometimes two, three corners this one's already disintegrating a bit but you know they're all all the different so um, most of them are quite easy but it's just the odd one you get that wants to be a pain
just I, I find some some are very hard to get off and some are very very easy so you know you have to just figure out which ones you want to take off Let's just see what else I have for boards here. I did that one. There's an another one with MLCCs that are pretty big. It's time consuming, but uh, they're supposed to be uh, well, the MLCCs are good. I think they got some palladium and stuff in them. I think if I'm right, palladium is pretty, pretty valuable right now. I think it's worth more than gold or something. But it's those metals, like I say, uh, they're uh, used, they weren't that much demand, or they just weren't popular, and then all of a sudden they, they just went up in price big time. You have to really look. I'm not seeing much more that I can really pick off that for MLCs, so I'll throw this in here and I'll pull the, this IC chip flat pack. These ones, these standard chips are pretty easy. Actually, pretty nice to come off. Actually, I missed some MLCs here. See, it's really weird. You can look at a board and see nothing, and all of a sudden you look again, and you see a bunch. It's just sometimes it's like that. These boards. There's another gold crystal oscillator, but it's so small. You know, very hard to deal with. And these little icy chips, if you want, you can pop them off. I'm not sure if there's going to be any gold in those small chips, but, you know, they say as long as there's three legs on each side, they'll, you, you can sell them, right? I think that's a tantalum here. That's why I use, that. that's why I use this loop here. It's not a tantalum. It starts with a D, so. So you have to look at a tantalum, we'll start with a C. You know, it looks like something like a tantalum, but it's, it's, you know, it's a little short. It doesn't have the line, the positive line. These are all boards out of TVs, um, you know, flat screens, um, cable boxes, that type of stuff. There's some more stuff, same, same stuff as before. What I'm doing is I'm starting to, um, clean these things up because they've been sitting too long. And then, and this way I could, uh, start disposing some of these boards. I'll just throw them in those barrels for now. So I can figure a little more about these things. Because, I mean, these boards, even though there's, I'm not getting everything, there's still some value there. There's still copper. The board's copper. There's still some value there. These chips are a little tougher. They got, uh, they got a band on here. The band has, um... The band has a, a metal band welded in there, so it's pretty hard to get the IC chip off. A little bit tougher that one, but there's a big flat pack here. Okay, so okay, that's it. That's all I want to show you guys. Just um, how I'm starting to process some of these here, just to get them all ready because you know they're sitting too long and. I want to start uh, trying to get some gold out of stuff here. So I store crystal oscillators, BGAs, IC chips. I store them, the mixed IC chips and flop packs in this one. And then you have your um, MLCCs, black tantalums, and then you have your yellow tantalums. And then I made another bag here. I uh, put some miscellaneous stuff in it. I got the transistors there. There's transistors here too. 
And these ones here, there's a different type of BGA here also. I'm not sure of the gold quality on that one. Okay, that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like. As always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.